Hello everybody, my name is Kai, welcome back to Warframe. Today we will be taking a look at my most used secondary weapon in the entire game, the wonderful, wonderful Epitaph. The Epitaph is Sevagoth's signature weapon, his wrist-mounted sidearm as it states here. This is one of the best primers in the entire game, in my opinion, and also one of the highest damage dealing secondaries. It excels in both categories. To acquire the blueprint and the parts for your epitaph, come on over to the Railjack menu and look at the Void Storms menu. You can get the receiver, blueprint, and barrel from either the Venus, the Saturn, or the Earth Proxima Void Storm missions. It is a 10% chance on both Venus and Earth and a 9.76 on Saturn. So technically, if you really want to farm it, do Venus or Earth, but honestly, you can run any of them. Saturn would be a bit more of a challenge. Earth is the easiest to do quickly, though. Now that you know where to get your epitaph, why don't we go hop into the sim and I can show you why this gun is, for being a primer and a damage weapon, really, really good. The epitaph is a secondary, like I mentioned before, that has two firing modes. The tap fire is a sort of AoE blast that has guaranteed cold procs. These cold procs do not show up in the stats for the weapon, but they are guaranteed to happen every single time, and those will just slow down enemies. It also procs blast innately. That does show up and will affect your mods if you were to use heat and cold, it would just affect the base blast. The charge mode of the epitaph, on the other hand, when you hold down, instead of shooting out a AoE projectile like the tap fire, shoots at a single projectile that has a guaranteed impact proc. If you're thinking of hemorrhage for impact to slash, that is where most of the epitaph's damage comes from, but we will get to that later. And again, it is just a single target guaranteed impact proc, and obviously it has a multiplier to the head. It also has body punch through, so you can hit multiple targets, and you will get the impact proc on all of them. If you look at my ammo in the bottom right, you will also see that the epitaph has a max ammo of 40. You've been running over this, doesn't give me any more, but it does not have a reload. As in, you pick up ammo and it just automatically goes into its, in quotes, magazine. When I shoot, I just lose ammo. They both expend one charged or tap fire. And if I were to run over ammo, it just adds more. There's no magazine, and even though it does have a reload of 0.6 seconds, that doesn't matter. How fast you can fire the gun is purely dependent on your fire rate. We can actually take a look at the Epitaph's stats now, and you won't be surprised to see that these are some of the most juiced stats in the entire game. Now, I already explained the ammo max and the ammo pickup. You get 20 ammo on a pickup. It's really, it's really hard to run out of ammo with this weapon unless you're just not killing things with it. The main use of this gun, I'd say, is as a primer, so you will be getting kills with other things, but this gun can output a lot of damage. But besides that, looking at the quick shot, the quick shot would be the radial attack right here, the non-charge. You will see that it has a crit chance of 2 and a critical multiplier of 1.2. But that's because the quick shot is the priming mode of the epitaph a base status chance of 50 percent which is tied with the kuva nucor for the highest status chance of any secondary the radial attack has a zero percent crit chance the same 50 percent status chance and is separate from the actual quick shot bullet but this also has that innate blast and even though it doesn't show the cold here it is a guaranteed cold proc for every single shot the charged shot on the other hand has the highest critical chance of all secondaries and a critical multiplier of 2.6, which is way above average, status chance of 4. But that's because this also has the highest status chance on any secondary, only tied with, I think, the Kuva Nucor and the, um, the Tysus. But yeah, the critical chance on the charge shot is absolutely insane. And it also has that innate 2 meter punch through on the charge shot. I don't know if it shows it here. To charge up a full shot, it only takes 0 0.36 seconds, but through the use of some mods, we will be lowering this so that we can get off some more shots, whether we are priming or using it for damage. For you guys, I am just going to be showing you how you want to mod your epitaph for pretty much any element, as I think the main use of this gun is for priming for condition overload melee weapons. Obviously, like I said before, it can do damage with a good damage setup, and then I also have a good Archon Vitality Heat one, but that's just kind of the same principle as modding for any element. Starting off with our Arcane, because most people use this in tandem with a melee weapon, I think the best one you could use is Secondary Dexterity. This gives combo duration and more damage on melee kill. If you are using it as a primer, which is my main usage of it, you're not getting kills with this thing, so the extra damage is kind of meaningless, but the extra combo duration is useful for, for pretty much every melee weapon. Modding the rest of the epitaph is a bit different though. You see, most builds like to use the galvanized mods because they provide a lot of multi-shot and have to stack up. But when you think about it, 
we're not getting kills with our epitaph because the quick shots damage is so poor that we we're not going to be getting kills in the first place so all of these mods are kind of useless which means that we are actually just going to be using base barrel diffusion here because this gives more multi-shot at the start than galvanized diffusion does even if mine was max rank this is 120 this would be 110. the same thing goes with using sure shot over galvanized shot this gives you more status chance but it also just gives that more base damage and sure shot just like we don't we don't need this we're not damaging with this and sure shot just gives more at the start a little bit of fire rate is nice on the epitaph and in my opinion the best fire rate mod is lethal torrent because it gives multi-shot and fire rate so actually with this plus 60 multi-shot we're sitting at 180 which is really nice obviously you can use this in tandem with galvanized diffusion but like i said we're not getting kills so we're not going to be increasing the multi-shot on this status chance right now with just sure shot is sitting at 95 since a lot of people like to use the epitaph from viral priming obviously we are going to be using frostbite and pistol pestilence for those 60 60 mods because they give us viral and more status chance with just these two mods, we are already sitting at 155% status chance. And we have a multi-shot of 2.8. Let's just round it up to three. You shoot three bullets out with a single trigger pull. All of them can proc up to two status effects. You can get six status effects, if you were to mod for that, in a single shot. Now, obviously, there's the innate cold and blast and viral. So right now, we're getting three status effects with just these mods. And that means your damage, if you're using a condition overload melee, which is what a lot of people use primers for, is going to be insane. But moving on back to the epitaph, here is where your choices can kind of diverge. Now, like I said before, you don't use the epitaph to damage things. So pretty much all crit mods, any damage mods, bane mods and stuff, these are useful for like the heat inherit system, but just for applying these status effects, not really. So what I actually do is I slot in the anemic agility mod because this just gives you even more fire rate. And for the charge allows you to spam the hell out of this to prime really, really quickly. And since every shot can proc up to two status effects with just these three mods we have on it, that's a lot. These last two slots, I actually like to use both of the auger mods. Why do I do this? Well, this is because the auger mods set bonus gives you 80% of energy spent on abilities converted to shields. These obviously stack with the auger mods that you could have on your frame. And for shield gating builds, these two mods are pretty much necessary to pair up with Brief Respite and a couple on your frame so that you can't shield gate. Obviously, these aren't actually really doing much for the epitaph. The damage is kind of worthless. The status duration is nice, but things you're priming, you want to be killing. So it's not like you need the status to last very long. If you don't want to use these, you can throw more elements on here. Personally, I think that three status effects alone gives you, what, 240% damage on your condition overload melee. You can go for more. If you wanted to use Scorch and Jolt for even more status champs, now every bullet is doing um, two status effects, which paired with the multi-shot. And then, you know, you have now Blast, Radiation, and Viral, and Cold, Innate, four status effects. You know, like, this is really good. Personally, I like to stick with the auger mods because I shield gate on a lot of builds, but for a pure priming build, use this. The most statuses you could get, and when I come and showcase it on some enemies, very, very quickly stacking up to 10. It's just, like, that is fantastic status spread. The AoE on this is affected by the Fulmination and Prime Fulmination mod. It is about an 8 meter at base, which is why I don't use them, because it's really easy to just do that instead of, you know, just shooting here a couple times. I don't really think it's that worth it. But if you want to just shoot it once or twice and affect a lot of enemies, I guess you can use them if you like. Modding for Corrosive is relatively the same, except you actually have another open mod slot. So I just use Augur Seeker here for the status duration, because it is nice. And I use secondary dexterity on most of these. Now my Archon Vitality Heat Inherit build. This is for when you're using the Heat Inherit system. Which means that I am using a Bane mod. This is a little complicated. I won't be explaining it here. But I just build for pretty much raw heat. And then a little bit uh, less viral and stuff. But if you want to see what the damage builds look like. Well you're in for a treat. Because this thing packs a punch. Now I don't use the Epitaph for damage. It's purely a primer. And I just don't really see the need to use it for damage. But this right here, because the Epitaph's charge shot has a guaranteed impact status and its fire rate, 
even with lethal torrent is under 2.5 means that we have a 70 percent chance to proc a slash status when we you know get that impact and it's a guaranteed impact so through the use of the crit mods target cracker creeping bullseye and galvanized crosshairs a bane mod to double dip on our slash procs and then obviously the multi-shot mods the galvanized ones this time because we are using them for damage and merciless because we are getting kills you can make an argument for deadhead but since this is a slash build it's hard to actually get the procs on deadhead we come up to these gunners and one shot no stacks I mean, that is, those slash procs are huge. Obviously, it being a slash build, you know, they take a second to kill. But if we wanted to bump this damage up even more, we can add the viral status effect to this build. Personally, I find it a little too hard to be able to fit the viral status onto the epitaph itself and that's actually not really that big of a deal because again the charge shot has such a low status chance we wouldn't be proccing it so you can off source those procs to something like a panzer vulpa phyla which bringing it up to some enemies right here now that viral is on all of our enemies we should be able to practically one shot most of them once we get our stack built up yep there we go Oh, red critting now. Because we're actually getting those headshot kills and not waiting for the slash to kill. Obviously, this is a situation where using primary deadhead would be even better because we can get that headshot multiplier, but you know, that that's that's kind of insane. Obviously, it requires something outside of the epitaph itself to use the panzer, but there are other ways to get that. One of my favorite weapons to use on Mesa is the Sado, because the Sado spreads status really really quickly so when modded for viral i also have a video on this fantastic weapon on my channel go check it out if you haven't seen it but when modded for viral it spreads status so so quickly that getting these enemies back in here and just shooting a glaive at them with status on all of them we don't even need to use a panzer and just every now and then we just need to pull it back out and just do that again and then we start one shotting is this an efficient way to go about killing things? Personally, I think not, because I could just be using a much higher, much faster KPM weapon. But I think it's important to demonstrate that this can kill those really heavily armored targets really, really quickly. I like to bring the epitaph for priming purposes, but if you're bringing it to that, you know, you come across an Eximus unit and you just bop them in the head and one-shot them, like, it actually does really, really good at that. In this last slot here, you could make an argument for more fire rate, but using another fire rate mod such as Anemic Agility pushes the fire rate above the um, times 2 multiplier you get when you are below 2.5 for hemorrhage, so I don't like to do that. So personally, I would recommend you just use Galvanized Shot here. This just gives you more direct damage to targets, which is nice. Obviously, you would need to Forma again because I only have one Forma in my Epitaph, but again, I don't use this for damage, and just the one form because it comes with a default to V polarities is perfectly fine to fit any build you would like to do. Showcasing the usage of a primer for a melee weapon, right here I have the Skiajati, just because it looks cool and whatever. I am using Corrosive Heat right now because my Panzer is spreading viral easily for me. I get it on all the enemies and, you know, we'll just spread it. And it makes this weapon just, oh, 700,000 slash proc right there. And the Skiajati isn't, like, the best weapon. Like, this isn't like I'm using the Cronin or anything. And it just demolishes. Again, this is because of the Condition Overload mod giving more melee damage per status type affecting the target. So, you know, if I had, for example, 10 status effects on my target, I would be getting 800% more melee damage. This is kind of where melees get their sort of, like, arcane uh, primary merciless from, because, obviously, they don't have those. And just with that, the Epitaph is just a fantastic weapon. I mean, show me something else that can kill just as quickly. Is also one of the best primers in the game, tied with the Kuva Nucor. And I mean, it does deal additional headshot damage in Sevagoth's hands, but tell me the last time you actually saw anyone play Sevagoth. You can't. So yeah, 
Another thing I actually didn't even really think about is that you can get viral on your epitaph when modded for corrosive heat and blast by using the nourish. With all of that being said though, I think the epitaph is a bit of a difficult one to showcase in the steel path by itself because again, you can use the damage build and it does a lot of damage, but it's not meant to be, you know, like a an AoE room-wide killing machine because its main usage is as a primer. It just also happens that it can do such insane amounts of damage. So I'm actually just going to showcase the epitaph alongside a melee weapon modded with condition overload. The epitaph is where most of the damage is coming from, but just understand that like this this thing is fantastic. I use it more than the Kuvan Nucor. In fact, like 53% of the 400 hours I have in just playtime of this game is with the epitaph. Jumping on our boy Revenant here who looks absolutely fire with this epitaph. Just going to be using it with a Guandao Prime, which has obviously got condition overload on it. And yeah, so let's get that gameplay done. Here I am in Mott in the Void on the Steel Path, my favorite place to test things for you guys. Now, I am using a Guandao here and the Epitaph as my primer. This is just because this is what I think most people are using the Epitaph for. Now, I think I have it modded for Corrosive Heat right now. Obviously with the Blast and Cold 2, because I have my Panzer for vi uh, Viral. So if you're using a Panzer, you don't really need to use Viral. Um, I actually do have Viral on it, but that won't make that big of a difference. Even just right now, you can see that you get the status procs on your enemies and your melees start to do a lot of damage. Let me actually get this up. You know, if I group them... They just, like, condition overload is just such a great mod and, you know, it's used on every melee weapon to allow it to scale. It's not a huge showcase of the epitaph itself, but this is just what people are going to use it for, so why not showcase that? Using it for Corrosive here would have actually been a little bit better since I would have um, gotten the uh, Viral Fox from my Panzer. But even that is not a big deal. And I don't even think of my Guandao is modded correctly right now. I don't think I'm using the Blood Rush mods on it. But it's just so easy to prime enemies and the enemies take up the color of its energy when primed, so it's really easy to tell who's primed and yeah. It's just all around a really great weapon. And its damage even without the mods is really respectable. Like, you know, I'm using all status mods right now. And I'm one-shotting these targets. It does have a damage split of oh, are these guys proctored radiation? Yes, they are proctored radiation. Forgot about that. On top of it being a oops, my die. Actually, it won't, because radiation procs. On top of it having innate cold that slows down enemies, it also has radiation on the corrosive build, which de aggroes enemies because they start shooting at each other. Which is really nice. But what I'm saying, it's like its damage is actually still really respectable here, even without a Bane mod or anything. Because its damage split is 30% um, impact, 45% slash, even without the conversion mods. So, like. You can still do it, and if you use Roar, which is a functions like a Bane mod, you will actually start to do a lot of damage. But this is a primer build, so we're gonna use it for priming. And for that, it does a fantastic job at. Alright, so we got Boar and um just using Revenant to just kill his enemies while I wait. Alright, uh we got Vor and Malice, so you know. It's a really good condition overload procker for, like, other melee weapons to kill. Like, if I do this and then I use my Guandao, it's good, but obviously the Epitaph itself, when not modded purely for damage, is f that fantastic at killing. Wasn't terrible, though. And then, you know, I'm on a meme Revenant build right now, so if I want to just uh, group all these enemies and then prime them and then... Boom, 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 boom. I mean, I know that's Revenant, but can't do it without the Epitaph and the viral stacks. Alright everybody, that is going to uh, do it for this one. The Epitaph is one of my, probably my most used weapon in general. 52% of the time I've been playing this game, percent of the time I've been playing this game, has been with it. It's just because it's that good. Damage, it's got it. Priming, it's... In IMO, it's the best at it. I know that the Kuvan Nucor technically gives its two hidden status effects and whatever, but I like the Epitaph a lot more. So, thank you so much for watching this video. I really appreciate all the support that you guys have been giving me lately. The Exultra video is doing really, really well. And I hope that this one is just up to you guys' standards. But I will see you guys in the next one. Peace!